Yeah, today we've uh, something that's kind of relevant in, in the in the time that we're recording this um, yeah. is called Basil Three, and uh, not something that you would see in the mainstream media, not something you would have uh, been even taught about, you know, in school or anything like that. But it's something that uh, has a big impact. It's going to have a big impact, and it's a big opportunity as well. I think um, with all of these things, you can look at it in different mm. ways, and we look at it as well, how do we how do we benefit from this information rather than just having the information itself? Uh, what do we do with it, and uh, what does it mean to, to to kind of me and you? Um, probably worth saying. Look, just before we get get started, mm. that um, we're not financial advisors. We we don't want to be financial advisors. We don't give advice. We just want to give education, information, and mm. to empower people to make their own decisions because then. Mm they can see what's going on and they can see what's best for them and they don't need us to, to tell them what to do. We don't definitely don't want to do that. So, um, yeah. And there'll yeah. be a link down in the description. So if people want to get in touch and find out more about exactly you know, how you can help them, yeah. check out the, uh, the Gold Buster link down below everyone and mm. uh, get in, the, get in the, the, uh, the flow of the information that Adam and James can supply. And, and everything that we go through right now, please do your own research on this. As we always say, don't believe us. Go and do your own research. Empower yourself. Yes. Uh, and, and learn this for yourself. But we're just bringing you information that the banks know all about. They're fully aware of it. And that's why they're doing what they're doing, which we'll find out in a more. Um, but we're just bringing that information to you, as we always do, to the normal people on the street, to hardworking families, uh, like you and I. <laughs> Um, we're just bringing that information to them to help them so they can do the same. They can emulate the banks. Is that the best way to explain it? I think. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, be your own bank. Be your own yeah, bank. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Let me uh, let me share my screen and we can show you uh, show you what we're talking about. <clears throat> can you see that there? Yes. Perfect. So we're calling this the Gold Revaluation 2023. And look, ignore it at your own risk. It's a, it's a, it's a big thing. Mm. So, first of all, mm. well, what, what is it? This Basel three that we're talking about, and this gold revaluation. What, what does it even mean? And um, I, I think it's worth saying at the beginning as well. Um, please don't get too kind of um, bogged down in some of the terminology. Um, we'll try and put it in in normal kind of everyday terms because mm. when you read this mm. stuff you end up, you know, um, looking up words and thinking, well, what does that even mean? And what does it mean to mm. me? So we're, we're going to put it in as, as kind of normal English as we can, uh, but just bear with it if there's a few words that you, you're not, you know, you're not familiar with. So mm. uh, Basel, Basel 3 is um, like a, a banking regulation. And it's a, from a family of, of banking regulations, Basel 1, Basel 2, Basel 3. And uh, just like Rocky movies and Die Hard 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it, it was all kind of started and put together in, um, in the aftermath of the 2008 uh, financial crisis. Okay. The, as with regulation and things like that, it's always reactive. So the bad stuff happens first. And then years later, um, you know, um, what's the word kind of governments and countries say right we need to do something about that that happened a few years ago which is yeah you know um some could say too late for that situation but they're, they're trying to do something yeah. and basil three is simply put um a preventative measure and it's to it's put in place to protect or meant to help protect um hard-working people's money when they're depositing it in a bank because what happened in in 2008 if anyone uh, doesn't know is banks just went and risked far too much far too much of mine and your money and they they just weren't responsible for the outcomes of those risks that they took and years later the regulators say well actually you need to take some responsibility and we're going to put these this framework in place um for you to work work with because banks don't do it themselves they don't mm. they don't uh, take responsibility for all these risks themselves so they have to be forced to do it so that's that's kind of what 
what Basel 3 is. It's just a, a changing of the times of, um, of banking and making banks kind of do what they don't want to do in, in, some, in some regard. They want to take all that money and just risk it and, and be <clears throat> reckless with it. But this regulation says, actually, you can't do that. So started in 2010. And uh, yeah, it's taken a lot of years to get to this point. Still not fully implemented, as you'll see. Mm. So will it come in in 2023 then, Adam? Is that what you're saying? So Basel 1 and Basel 2 are um, part of this kind of family of framework, and uh, uh -huh. they're already implemented. Uh -huh. Basel 3 was meant to come in um, before COVID hit, and mm. then it was just delayed. And now it's kind of part in, but part not, as, as we'll explain. Mm. So um, there's still time for people to, to take advantage of what we think is a big opportunity. Mm. And, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go through that as we, as we go through the next slide. So that's what it is. It's just um, the regulators say, look, to the banks, you can't do what you used to do. And mm. you've got to, you gotta, um, yeah, kind of get in line a little bit. I think I think in our terms, it's reining the banks in. That's yes. what it's supposed to do. So I'm supposed to rein the banks in, and uh, it was supposed to come in this month actually, but it's been the can's been kicked down the road again. So it's yeah. It's and the so next one then, second uh, quarter of next year now. So second quarter of next year. So what? April of next year. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's the late. That's the latest. The latest but yeah. it, it's been moved before. It can. I'm sure it can be moved again. But okay. The whole point we're making is there's there's time between now and then. Yeah. You see that 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 um, presents an opportunity for people if they want to. So what does it mean? Well, first of all, it forces banks to be responsible, forces them to not take crazy risks and um, you know not hold on to stuff at the other end, and it means that they have to have enough cash reserves to cover their their risk. Whereas before it was, you know, a bit of a wild west of finance and, you know, anything goes. Whereas now they have to be um, more responsible for the risk they're taking. The other thing that it, it does is it forces them to have enough liquidity. And, and don't worry, you know, liquidity is not a word that most people use in day-to-day in -day life. But liquidity just means that they need enough um, cash or the cash equivalent, as you'll see, to cover one depositors funds in the bank and two when they're taking these uh, risks they need to be able to cover those positions if anything goes wrong and this is what they weren't doing before so this has all been brought in because there was a there was a gap there was an absence of this happening does that make sense the the other thing that makes it interesting for us is that as part of Basel three, allocated gold is being revalued. And gold previous to this, uh, when, when the banks held it, was a tier three asset. Don't worry about the terminology too much again, but a tier three asset was like the riskiest asset that a bank could hold. And it could only be valued at 50% of its value. So um, that's what it was before. After Basel three, gold is being revalued. Allocated gold is being revalued to a tier one asset. And that means that 100% of its value can be, uh, it can be counted as 100% of its value on the bank's balance sheet. So when we talk about um, Basel three forcing banks to have enough liquidity, and the reason we use liquidity and not cash is you could call a tier one asset liquidity. So it could be cash. And after Basel III, it could also be allocated physical gold as well. So it's it's putting the stamp on gold and saying yeah. it's almost like yeah. a, um, a a new version of a gold standard. It's not in the way that it's been used before, but but gold is like a stabilizer. And when things uh, become yeah. unstable, they bring gold in. In this in this sense, it's slightly a slightly different way of bringing it in but they bring gold in to stabilize everything. Mm. So throughout this um, period, when you talk about, um, is it already here? And uh, you know, when, when's it coming in? 
Well, Basel three is already has already been implemented in the US and in the EU. Um, and you say, well, you know, wh why is that not really played a part in in gold? You know, the price of gold or anything like that. And that's because only 30% of the bullion market, the gold bullion market, runs through the US and through Europe, through the EU. The other so it's not coming through the UK then because we're out of the EU right now? Well, 70% of the bullion market runs through London. And the, um, the implementation of Basel III in the UK was meant to be the 1st of January this year. And that's what's been kicked down the road to mm -hmm. the second quarter of next year. So it's kind of part in, but the majority is still yet to come. Huh. Um, again, you have to do a bit of digging to find this stuff. It's not mm. something that you, uh, that, that you see, but please do your research and you'll see that, you know, how this is uh, kind of playing out. Let's just remember that the, all of this started in um, 2010. Uh, we're now at 2022. Banks have known this has been, uh, this is going to come into play since that point. <laughs> and before that, banks were net sellers of gold, of physical gold. <clears throat> uh, after that, banks have been net buyers. Why? Because they know whatever they buy after Basel three is going to have a hundred percent of its value. It's going to be revalued to a hundred percent of its value on their balance sheets. So while the prices are low, they've just been hoovering it up mm. because they know, they know what's coming. And, and right now they're getting it about 50%. Yeah. You say they're not, they're not buying it at 50%, but it's worth 50% on their balance sheet. So while prices are low, they're buying it. Yes, it's worth 50%. But as soon as Basel 3 comes in, it's now can be valued at 100% on their balance sheet. What value um, are they getting it now at then, Adam? So it's still at the, they're still getting it at the market price, but it's, it's when they look at it as far as their, their balance sheet, they look, they uh -huh. can only be used as 50%. So they say, look, you have to have X amount of liquidity for this amount of risk. Yeah. Well, you can value the cash at face value. Um, you can value loans at a different value. Gold, you can only use it as 50% of its, of its value. Yeah. So okay, so I'm curious right now. So say for whatever the price of gold is right now, when Basel 3 comes in, are we going to see a jump in that? Just what people bought physical gold. Is it going to, is it going to be a jump then, or is it going to be kind of the same, but on banks balance sheets, it will go from 50% and they'll go to hundred percent. That's why I'm curious. Yeah. About. Okay. Yeah. So, so our thoughts on that is um, there's a few different types of um, ways of buying gold and that banks deal with gold. So mm. one is physical allocated gold and that, that word allocated is very important. Um, that means that it's, um, you know, exactly which bars that you own. So it, it's, it, you know, you know, the bar serial number. The other way of doing it is unallocated. And that's where you might say, yeah, you own 10 grams, but you don't know which 10 grams. It, it's kind of as long as as long as the, you know, when you want that 10 grams, it can be produced. Uh, it doesn't essentially have to be there. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess what I'm asking is, are we going to, so whatever the price of gold is today, when Basel 3 comes in, are we going to see a significant change? Are we going to see a jump of, you know, 50%, 20%, or is it kind of just as it um, is right now? What's yeah, your I thoughts mean, on that, really? I, yeah. I think I think there's going to be an, an increase, and here's why. Because definitely banks have, have got to... Um, when people buy gold from a bank and when banks are dealing with gold, it's, it's unallocated or, or paper gold, which is just like a promise of gold. Yeah. Um they're going to be pushing people, and there's already um, there's, there's articles written that banks are already encouraging people that are owning unallocated gold to move towards allocated gold. So they, there's going to be a bigger push on allocated gold. So there's going to be a bigger demand for it. Um, so I go think, up. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, yeah. we think the price of gold's going to go up. Now, by how much? It's easy to throw out numbers and say, oh, yeah, it's going to go to the moon or it's going to, you know, 50 yeah. percent. Whatever. We don't know. But the fact that there's more focus being brought in on gold as this stabilizer yeah. or yeah. almost like a, a, a new kind of gold standard in, in a way, then it puts way more uh, emphasis on 
having physical gold because it's worth more to the banks. Mm. They can right. use they can use more of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So well, basically, yeah. bottom line is if people listening have got physical gold or they've got it in a vault, then by and large, they should see an increase when we get fully into Basel 3. Yeah, we think so. Mm. We think so. Okay. And that's why the price has been kept down, Tom. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, this is just what we believe. And you know, people have to go and do their own research again. But yeah, it makes total sense, doesn't it? When when this was when Basel Three came about, the banks were fully aware of it. And all of a sudden, when when they knew that this was being set up and this was being implemented, or they knew when this would be implemented in 2010 ish, they started being. I mean, the, the, I think from the numbers I've looked at, it's like. It's over and above 30,000 tonnes of gold they've bought since then. They've been net buyers massively. They went from mainly sellers to buyers overnight. Right. Um, okay. And it was at the same time as Basel III was, was put out there to be implemented to, you know. So it's, it's strange that, isn't it? How the, how the metals prices have been, have been suppressed, which we believe they have been. Yeah. And then banks have been buying so much because what would, you rather, what would you rather buy something at a high price or a low price? Yeah, it makes sense that they're hoovering it up as they are doing, yeah. up until Basel Three kicks in, fully kicks in, then you know, and and all we believe, just bringing it to the normal person on the street, all we believe is, we all should be doing the same thing. We should be doing what they're doing, not as yeah. they're saying, <laughs> doing as yeah. they're doing. Just watch what they do and do the same because they know what's yeah. going on. Yeah. They know what's going to happen, uh, and it's just it's basically. Basel three is forcing the banks to um, hold enough liquid assets to cover their illiquid um, and, and riskier uh, products, such as property, mortgages, um, bonds, shares in other companies, things like that. Um, they have to have enough to, to cover that, and yeah, and gold is basically going to be uh, going to be classed as a, a, a tier one asset now, and they can use that as liquid, and they'd rather use that if you think about it than cash. Because cash gets hit by inflation, metals don't. So right now, it's a tier three asset, but it's going to become yeah. a tier one. Yeah. Yes, and for all of that unallocated, yeah, yeah, all of that unallocated gold that's still tier three. Remember, tier three assets need to have more liquidity to hold them there. So why why are mm. banks going to want to hold on to unallocated because they need to cover their positions and it's only worth fifty percent. Mm. So they're going to want to go to allocated gold which mm. is you know a hundred percent of its value can be counted the, the other thing to bear in mind and this might sound um uh, yeah a bit of a mad idea but um for let's say paper money you deposit paper money into a bank and the bank can lend out multiples of that paper money so they don't yeah. have to have um it, it's not one dollar in one pound in one pound or dollar out it's one in you know nine or ten out yeah. Well, with unallocated gold, they can do the same. So there's some um, stats out there that say for every one gram of unallocated gold, there's about 350 to 400 mm. owners yeah. of that one bit of gold. Really? Yeah. yeah. So this is the, I guess, the finer detail of, of what it actually yeah. means is you're going from unallocated where there's multiple owners because it doesn't have yeah. to be there. Basel three is going to force um, uh, banks and, and bullion dealers to, to actually have the metal in the first place mm. rather than just right. selling a, a promise of the metal or, or some kind of paper ownership. So, so that one, one in nine out is going to end when Basel three comes in. Not with, not necessarily with cash, but it's going to, it's mm. going to put more pressure on, on banks to actually have the metal uh, the allocated metal um, when they're dealing in it. There's, because basically un, unallocated is going to be tier three, isn't it? So it's going to be seen as being a risky asset. Yeah, but, in some, um, but when you allocate the allocated gold, tier one is going to be one in, one out. Well, they can, yeah, because they can only sell the metal. Yeah, well, if, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. If they're saying uh, you own this, this bar with this serial bar number and it's held in this vault, then mm. you can only be the, you can only have one owner of that of allocated metal. Yeah, that's why unallocated you'll find there's things like free storage and, and things like that to kind of entice you in. Well, yeah, it's free storage because mm. it doesn't have to be there. 
You know, yeah. mm. we, we can all give free storage on an item that doesn't exist, right? Yes. Well, I guess what I'm driving at is when it becomes allocated and it's tier one, it's one to one. I'm assuming that's going to end or be, be the beginning of the end of fractional reserve lending, etc. Is mm. that right? Um, I think that's a bigger, um, that's a kind of big, bigger discussion. And it's not, I don't think this will end. It could be the start of it, but I, I don't think it's going to end fractional reserve lending as far as paper money, but it, it's, mm. it's going that way as far as metals. Um, and maybe that's the maybe that's the starting point. Maybe it's the beginning. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, but we, we mm. don't know. Like like all of these things, yeah. that so many there's been so many reports out there that uh, Basel mm. three was coming in on the first of January, and then all of a sudden um, it, it didn't. So yeah, you're always playing catch up a little bit, but knowing that it's coming in 2023, mm. uh, second quarter, for us we see this as an as a, an opportunity. Mm. And there's kind of three three points that is one as james said emulate the banks they've been hoovering up uh, gold since 2010 because they know what's coming they've gone from net sellers to net buyers um take advantage of low prices when prices go down the professionals are just buying more mm. that's all they're doing um you know normal everyday people on the street when they see something go down we get a lot of people panicking saying well it's gone down that's fine there's a sale on, you know, buy more. That's what the banks are doing and see it as a long-term thing. Yeah. And the other thing is, look, act now. 2023 will be here before you know it. I know yeah. it's the very yeah. beginning of 2022, but um, yeah. When did they when did they change that, Adam? So you were expecting it on the 1st of January. Was yeah. it kind of you get to the 2nd or 3rd and it's like, oh, it hasn't happened, and then they came out with it, or did they tell you like a week or two before that it's going to be the second quarter of 2023? Uh, yeah, good question. I don't know the exact date that they um, that they announced the move, yeah. um, but it was meant to be um, initially. It was meant to be before COVID, and then they were like, "Right, we're pushing it back." And I think it's just been a rolling thing that's been pushed back. Yeah. Obviously, for for you know all banks to change on such a, a fundamental level is a big. It's a big ship yeah. to turn around. It's not just flicking a button. Um, but it wasn't so, like in the last. 10 days that they suddenly changed the goalpost. No, the I don't date. think so. I don't think so. Okay. I think it was before that. It was um it was before the date that it was due. Saying, look, <laughs> yeah, th this isn't going to happen now. Let let's push it back. I mean, it's been 10 years, uh, well, 12 years. Yeah. So uh, another I, year. I think it's in their interest to push it back, isn't it? It's in their interest. They can buy more metals before it does come in. Uh, which means it's in our interest to do our bit too for our own families. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, one hundred percent. Well, it, even if it didn't come in for another year or another year, even if it was pushed further down the line, it was, you're still better off. We always bring it down to basics. You're still better off having your hard-earned savings in metals than in cash. It really is as simple as that. Especially Can you put that slide yeah. back up again, Adam? Yeah. yeah. Where it says gold revaluation, because there's some. I haven't really done any numbers. I'll do some numbers quickly on it. So. Oh yeah. Um. So gold gold is 38, revaluation is 138, 138 comes to Donald Trump, interestingly enough. But if you do gold revaluation, uh, it comes to 176. 176 is actually back to the future. Um, there's a lot of codes and numbers in there. And I, one I discovered recently is, you know, in the Matrix where they upgrade, they, mm. they say, give us some, some uh, upgrades. So if you do matrix upgrades, that comes to 176 as well. And I just was thinking that just the last couple of days, but that mm. comes to gold revaluation. And then you're talking about 2023. And this is interesting because I was thinking just over the last few days, I'm thinking that perhaps a revaluation of everything could happen in 2023. Mm. But if you drop the zeros, one of the ways to do it in Geometry, I like to keep it open, but you can drop a zero in Geometry and when you do the numbers. So that would take you to 223. And 223 two, actually comes to global currency reset, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting the wording you put up there, gold mm -hmm. revaluation. Um, it's yeah, it's fascinating actually. Um, and even if you do mm -hmm. so, even if you do um, gold revaluation 176 plus 223 two, global currency reset, that comes to 339. If you break that, you can get 245, which is currency revaluation. It's interesting. My name, Thomas mm -hmm. Sidney Bushnell. But then it leaves you with 154, and 154 is uh, the Golden Jubilee as well. So 
anyway, there's some nice numbers there that I just saw with that. But it's interesting. Yeah. I've been thinking about those things, and then you kind of put it in in your in your slides. So yeah, yeah. Um, I think Back to the Future is quite interesting because it's yeah, it's like a new a new version of of the gold standard. Although it's not yes. really exactly the same, but it's it's yeah fundamentally bringing bringing gold um, back in as a stabilizer. Yeah, it always has been. It always yeah. Back yeah. in history, we've talked about this before in previous videos where gold's been brought in. It's been kicked yeah. out. Right? Gold brought in. <laughs> this has been kicked out. It's yeah. always been brought in to stabilize the yeah. uh, the uh, system. So, but if you're ahead of that, if you know when that is coming in, if you're aware of that, you can you use can it to your family's advantage. The yeah. banks yeah. use it to their advantage. We need to use it to our advantage, and that's all. That's really all we're here for is to bring yeah. that information to uh, the normal, average day people on the street, so they can benefit. Yeah. Mm. How do you think it will affect? So when Basel three comes in. Will we see a direct reflection on how that could perhaps affect silver, you know, the sister of gold? They're connected, aren't they? So I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. They're very much brother and sister, aren't they? Mm. That, that's the way we look at it anyway, but yeah. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. been a strong strong relationship between gold and silver for, for years. And I think when we, uh, in our last video, Tom, when, when James wasn't here, we talked We're about... We're doing the uh, ratios, weren't we? The ratios, mm. so... Yeah. It, yeah. it, there's definitely going to be a knock-on effect and, and people are looking at the gold-silver ratio um, to look at which metals to buy. Mm. So if gold's going through the roof, then what usually happens is one moves and the other catches up. And it's in yeah. those price differences that you can uh, take mm. advantage of that. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, we think it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be a shift throughout gold and silver. Mm. So yeah. Silver's like gold's excited friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gold, gold's the level-headed one, uh, yeah. and the, the friend, the silver's like the excited one. It always seems to just go whoa and just. Uh, Is there any other legislation that you got yeah. Basel three, and that seems to be kind of tied to gold? But is there another piece of legislation that is uh, specifically for silver, or is it just kind of one and other? You know, they're connected at the hip, and one will affect the other. Or is there another piece of legislation that we're waiting on as well in regards to silver. I, I don't know if there is or not. I've heard of, got, of, of Basel III, but I've never heard of yeah. anything else. Um, not, not that we've no, seen. No. Um, yeah, okay. it, it's usually throughout history, you can see that a lot of this stuff's just been centred around gold Yeah, and, and you, using gold. And I guess that's um, like a cultural and psychological thing that if, yeah. if it's gold that's Good worked point, before, yeah. then people bring gold back in rather than... Yeah. Just using something yeah. something different like silver. So, um, yeah, the main focus is is usually on gold. But anyone that knows precious metals knows that gold and silver have a very mm. tight link. Yes. Yeah, I, I truly think silver's in a lot. Yeah, I, I personally think that silver's been suppressed more than what gold has. But that's just my personal view. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I I'd probably agree with that. I definitely any, think any silver's move. a better buy right now as we speak, looking at the ratios. It's definitely a better option. That, again, in our view, we don't tell people to do this or advise, but in our view, silver's definitely a better yeah. buy right now compared to gold. Yes. Um, yeah. I think but, any time that the spotlight's been, you know, is shining on precious metals, uh, whether it's gold or silver, it has a, a knock-on effect to the others. So, um, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's a good opportunity for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, brilliant. Thanks, boys. That's, that's, um, that's been enlightening. I, I knew about Basel III, but I didn't know as much as you shared. So, yeah. Thank you. Any, yeah, any, yeah. Um, we'll any concluding simple, thoughts? Or... <laughs> we'll try keep to it simple, keep it simple. Yes, yeah, keep it simple. It's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult at times to try and keep it simple. That's why we have to, our brains are working that much harder to just try and keep it simple. And Yeah. I, I yeah, think it's what, do yeah. that, keep it simple. Yeah. It's mm. difficult as well because the, you know, if we talked in the same sense that the information we're reading, it's mm. talking about bank regulatory framework and all, the, oh, all yeah. these terms that you just don't you don't use in day to day life and that don't mean mm. anything. Yeah. To people. So we're trying to take it from, you know, legis legislative terms and saying, mm. OK, fine great big words, but what does it mean for me and you? Like, what does yeah. it actually mean? What do we do with it? Um, Show people the bacon, that's what they want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Trying exactly. to get into layman's terms, aren't we? And just some people take action because if they don't understand it, they won't take action and they won't do anything. Yeah. 
Yeah. We'll just switch off to it. It's really boring to Adam, isn't it? When you read it all, it's really, it's really yeah, when you're trying to, <laughs> yeah, when you're trolling all. through it and you think that's yeah. great, but what's the point? Like, what, what yeah. point are you trying to make? So, um, yeah, I just want to know is this a good thing for silver and gold in, you know, mm. in the relative short term of the next year or so for them? So, yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, whether you're in silver or gold, we believe you want a winner, whether you're in whichever metal you're in, you want, you want a winner, yeah, when, yeah, yeah. When, when it all when it all kicks off. Um, brilliant but yeah great thanks so Good. much Tom thanks for having us on yeah it's a pleasure we'll see you again soon and uh, we'll uh, we'll speak soon and everyone again check out the link below you'll see the Goldbuster link there you can sign up for information more about what Adam and um, James do and uh, how they can help you that's the important part so great alright boys stuff. thanks Tom soon. thanks mm-hmm. then cheers take care. cheers take care. bye